caution flag waves in Daytona, Kyle Larson, who made a pit stop earlier after cutting a tire against the wall, and now he goes to the inside. Looks like a little more right front fender damage. Yeah, you know what, Larry? I, I, I gotta believe it might be that sway bar rubbing on that tire. That would be my first thought. Oh. Not the way that little 21-year-old wanted to start this 2014 season. Great news, though, for Greg Biffle. We just had to spoke about it. He's the first driver one lap down. Darrell, in that spin, these cars run inner liners inside the Goodyear Racing tires, so the tire didn't go all the way down to the rim, but it looked like the right front was flat all the way around. Well, the right rear is flat, Mike. Uh, yeah. I, can, I can see the right rear there. That's why the car spun violently the way it did. You can see coming to pit road, he, uh, he lost a right rear tire this time. Pit road is closed. There will be no opportunity for the leaders to stop this time around. If you stop with pit roads closed, you restart in the back. Now, Denny Hamlin told Daryl under the pace lap about how many drivers we have out there, and we now have 42 drivers on the lead lap. Pit road will be absolute melee right now with different strategies than probably every driver come to pit road. Today's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learned making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. And, and you're not seeing double. Uh, one of those Goodyear blimps is making its final voyage here today. The Spirit of America, tail number N3A, will go into the Guinness Book of World Records for longest continuous use of one airship when it retires following today's Daytona 500. Here's another reason I really feel like pit road is going to be very chaotic because with only running 22 laps, I think as we saw in the earlier races here at Speed Week, we're going to see most of these drivers do fuel only. When those drivers at the front of the pack, when they're full of fuel, they're going to be leaving their pits, and some of the drivers at the back of the pack, they're not even going to be to their pits. But, yeah. but Larry, this is my favorite pit stop. I, I, I finally get to come to pit road. I get them. If my car's not real good, I can get some adjustments made. I can debrief a little bit here. I can take a deep breath. We've got 23 laps under our belt. This is a great little break here. Regroup. Let's go again. And watch these athletes at skilled positions going over this wall. Many of them are former NCAA and professional athletes in other sports because timing and agility is at a premium here to get that car on and off pit road as quickly as possible. Pit road is open. Krista. And we know how important pit stops are, as you documented, just trying to make sure they don't slide into their stall. Paul Menard, a fast car, he wants rear grip. The call for Paul on tires, two. Matt? Danny Hamlin hit pit road in the fifth position. He has an opening behind his box. Then he said the car was too tight to Matt Kenton and the 20 car spins around almost hit the teammate Danny Hamlin. Chassis adjustment, he's away to the 11. No chassis adjustments on the 41 right side tires, Matt. Also, right side tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He says his car is a little bit tight and bottoming out just a little bit. Now, Denny, uh, rather, Matt Kenseth did a very smart thing here. You must complete your service within your pit box. There's no rule saying which way you have to be facing. <laughs> We're 